not, I'm going to talk about uh, this theory. Uh, it was very popular in... Well, I'll just give you some background information about it first. The theory I'm going to be talking about is called Anglo-Israelism, or British Israelism. And this theory, it, uh, it states that um, it's this belief that the, Ang the British people, and to a broader extent, the Germanic and uh, Celtic sub-races, it's a belief that these groups are direct descendants of the ten lost tribes of ancient Israelites. Um, the theory, it was first spoken of in the year 1590 by a French Huguenot magistrate. He wrote a book his name was M. Lee Lawyer. Now, I could be pronouncing that wrong. But he wrote a book in the year 1590 called The Ten Lost Tribes of Israel. Now, <clears throat> I apologize for all this background noise. Uh, I figured I'd make a video outside on the porch tonight. And there's a train, and we live just a mile or so from the interstate. It's also cold out here tonight, which is strange. It's May the 10th, and it's crazy how chilly it's been. Uh, it's actually a frost advisory. But anyway, this train would be quiet. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Okay, in the year 1840, an Englishman named John Wilson wrote a book called Our Israelitish Origins. I might be pronouncing that wrong. I don't know. I have difficulty pronouncing anything it seems like to do with the word Israel. <laughs> it's a foreign concept to me. But anyway, his book was a uh, landmark achievement in this theory. Um, and over the following decades, it grew in popularity in England, and it also grew in popularity here in the United States. Um, it reached its most popular, most highest uh, levels, I guess, of membership uh, in the number of that people that actually subscribed to this theory uh, in the early 20th century in England and here in the United States. Uh, it was uh, popularized by people such as uh, Herbert Aldersmith, Edward Hine. Um, now, there are still some people in our uh, circles who still believe that we are indeed descended from the ancient Israelites. Now, I don't often make videos about religion because, you know, religion is one of those things that uh, people tend to disagree on and there are many wars that happen over religion and it's understandable, I suppose. Now, myself, I view the Anglo-Israelism theory it's complete nonsense. I don't buy it. I think that it is, uh, I think it's a weak and feeble attempt by Christians to try to associate themselves to, for, it's a weak attempt to forge a blood connection to Israelites. Now, I don't intend in these videos that I'm going to be making to upset anyone over their religious preference, whether you are pagan, Christian, or atheist. We're all entitled to our own beliefs. 
Um, so I will share with you my beliefs, and they work for me, but I'm not saying that they will work for you. I'm not saying they are superior, but I will give you my reasoning on why I think like this. Now, this Anglo-Israelism movement, it, uh, it was quite popular in the latter half of the 19th century in England. It, uh, there were very prominent members in English society that subscribed to this idea. And there were also several rabbis, several English rabbis that uh, supported this idea. <laughs> also, many of the adherents to Anglo-Israelism, they also supported the election of Benjamin Disraeli, the only uh, Jewish Prime Minister of England. Now I know there will be some that uh, that will say, oh, he was Christian. He was a Sephardic Jew, okay? And uh, yeah, he may have uh, been baptized or whatever. But you can tell by a lot of Benjamin's actions uh, during his uh, administration there. Very Semitic, to tell you the truth and how it played out in the following decades, leading up to World War I. So it just goes to show that it doesn't matter whichever side of the breakfast table that you look at, there's some kind of juice. And this is just another example of that. As I said, I think it's nonsense. It's utter nonsense. And the biggest reason that I believe that it is, other than all of the linguistic, the historical, the other studies that have been done that uh, disprove this theory, I look back at our ancient Euro European forebears they were pagan, all right? Christianity came from Palestine, from the Middle East. And it is Abrahamic. It is right there with Judaism and Islam. They are all related. They all are monotheistic. They all worship Yahweh, God, any other names you may have for them. Sure, they differ but it came from Palestine. Now, our ancient European pagan forebears, their worldview is much older than any Abrahamic religion. This is just facts. I mean, you can just read some history and you will see that the introduction in, of Christianity into Europe was a very bloody and sometimes genocidal affair. It can also be said that the story of Adam and Eve is basically a story of reincarnation that has been twisted about a little bit. See, that's what paganism is all about. It's about reincarnation, rebirth. Um, the cyclic aspect of nature. It's, nature is cyclical. And I know that, you know, Snorri Sturluson, uh, a lot of his works, he was a Christian. And he wrote the Norse myths in a, through an Abrahamic lens because he was Christian. You know, they look for a beginning and an end. I'm getting off, uh, off topic here. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, if indeed 
that's the Germanic, Celtic, Nordic tribes were indeed um, descend, direct descendants of the ancient Israelites. Why did they abandon their monotheistic religion, their Abrahamic religion? Why did they abandon it when they left the Middle East? Why didn't they keep practicing it? Why did they instead adopt a much older worldview? Well, in my opinion, our European ancestors, they never came from the Middle East. That is a fallacy, in my opinion. I think it's utter nonsense, as I've said. Um, why? They never had to adopt paganism because that is how they grew. This is how their worldview was. It has been this way since the since prehistory, honestly. Now, myself, I believe that if you go back thousands and thousands of years, that Europeans are descended from the Neanderthals. Now, the Neander oftentimes I've seen people arguing back and forth online, Christians and pagans. Christians will make fun of pagans that see this connection between uh, the our distant Neanderthal ancestors and us today. The Neanderthals were much more intelligent than most scholars in modern academia give them credit for. You, uh, I was just here recently, I believe it was at a cave in France or it was somewhere there in uh, Western or Central Europe. They had found a piece of fiber, a piece of string, or basically the precursor to rope. This piece of fiber, it was uh, intertwined. It is believed to be 60,000 years old. And this pushes, this just goes to show that our Neanderthal ancestors were much more intelligent. And they also, that's not even mentioning this, uh, it is an ancient uh, flute, you could say. It was made from the thigh bone, the femur, I believe, of a cave bear. This was found at a cave in Slovenia. And uh, up until this uh, instrument was found, it was believed that the Neanderthals had no ability to create art of any form. And this, uh, this uh, flute, or whatever you would call it, it is 50,000 years old, and there is this huge effort among academia to disprove that this... Uh, this flute is just been gnawed on by uh, animals or something. Perhaps coyotes, wolves or something. I will show you a picture here of this musical instrument. Looks like an instrument to me. I believe that's a little too... Uh, the holes are a little too perfect to be the uh, gnawings of a wolf. So our Neanderthal ancestors, they were very, very intelligent, much more so than many people are willing to give them credit for. And they adopted a pagan worldview based on reincarnation, and it was passed down over thousands of years. And the tribes of Europe, whether they be Slavic, uh, Celtic, Germanic, Hellenic, whatever, they had this belief system. We didn't come from Israel. We didn't come from the Middle East. Why would you want to think like that? Why would you try to rationalize that? We're native Europeans. We came from the forests, the steppes, the mountains. We didn't come from the desert. So yeah. These are my thoughts on Anglo-Israelism. I think it's rubbish, nonsense. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night. Bye-bye.